All right. We are going to now build into a trig unit. Okay, obviously we've just gone through higher order polynomials, quadratic functions, quadratic polynomials. Now we're going to build into some trig stuff. Okay, to get you, for many of you, we're going to move on to uh, advanced math or whatever. We're going to obviously segue into that now uh, with the last few weeks of the year. So we are going to build into trig. Now, a lot of this stuff from this assignment is going to be very, very easy. You've already done it before. I just want to review it, get it back in your mind so that we can build into more complex trig stuff. Now, again, trigonometry deals with triangles, just like it sounds, trig, triangles, right? So we're going to be talking about the two main types of triangles, the right triangles and the non-right triangles. I'm going to really focus on these next few days okay, on right triangles. And we'll build into the knot and right triangles after that. Now, there's some properties of these right triangles that we need to understand and fully know how to use. Okay, a couple concepts, a couple principles about right triangles. One of them okay, is a way of proving that a triangle is a right triangle, that, and that is through the use of the Pythagorean theorem. Do we remember the Pythagorean theorem? Have we dealt with it before? I'm sure you've dealt with it back in middle school. It's been a while, but you've dealt with it before. And what does Pythagorean theorem say about right triangles? If it is a right triangle, then what? Okay, so you've got this A squared plus B squared is equal to what? C squared. But what does this really mean? What does that mean, A squared plus B squared? What is A? A is a side, but what specifically what is it? Because if we look at a right triangle, we got two legs and we got a hypotenuse. And always the hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle, right? So A is what in this case? A leg. B is what in this case? And C is what? So we're basically taking the leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, correct? Pythagorean theorem, that is what Pythagorean theorem says. Now, when dealing with right triangles, we can use this to prove it. Or when dealing with a triangle and trying to prove like in 1 through 4, if they are right triangles, we can use this to help prove that. So we take a look at number 1 right now. And we're going to cruise through this. Okay. We have this right here, something to that effect right there. Now, we need to see if this is in fact a right triangle or not. Now, we obviously are going to use Pythagorean theorem and a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared to do that. But, how do we know which one's a, which one's b, and which one's c? How do we know? First of all, it doesn't really matter between a and b, right? We know those are the two legs. What are the two legs in this case? What is the hypotenuse? Okay, the hypotenuse is always going to be the what? The longest or the largest of the, uh, of the three sides, correct? So that means that if this is a right triangle, then 6 squared plus 8 squared will equal 9 squared. And we need to see if this is true or false. And all you're doing in 1 through 4 is determining if these are in fact right triangles or not. That's it. Not very difficult stuff. This assignment will not be difficult at all. But we are introducing the basics of trig right now. And then we're going to get through this fairly quickly and get to the next stuff at a rapid pace. So 6 squared is? 8 squared is? And 9 squared is? 36 plus 64 is? Is 100 equal to 81? No. So that means what? This is not a right triangle, correct? Really easy. Yeah. Take a look at number three. We'll cruise through this here. It'll take me long at all to get through this. I just want to, again, rehash this, make sure that you remember how to do this. Remember how to use these, well, this principle, these couple principles. Now, we want to prove that this is a right triangle. Now, when dealing with decimals to get common answers and everybody get the same, I want you to always round to three if you possible. If it's not possible, you only get two or one, then keep it at that. 
But if it's over three, I want you to reduce to three so that we all get consistent answers. Okay? So, is this the right triangle or not? How am I going to do it? What are my legs here? Square the legs. Square the legs. That's a leg, and this is a leg. This is the larger side, so that's the hypotenuse, right? Yes. So we have 7.2 squared plus 2.1 squared. If it is a right triangle, will equal 7.5 squared, and that's the goal. Let's figure out if this is a right triangle or not. So what is 7.2 squared here? 51.84. 51.84. And what is 2.1 squared? 4.41. And what is 7.5 squared? 56.25. And then we add these together, and what do we get? 56.25. Exactly. So is this a right triangle? Yes. That would mean that the right triangle would be right there. The 90 degree would be right there, right? Now we're not for, we're not talking about whether it's a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90 triangle quite yet. We will get into that. We will get into the unit square and get deep into trigonometry or deeper into trigonometry. That's what we're going to do the rest of this year. <coughs> so then yes, you would write yes. This is a right triangle. No, now, yes. let's take a look at number... Five now. What do you notice about number five? What is it asking in these problems right now, in, in this section here? Find the missing side, or find the x. Solve the x, not find the x and point to it. But solve for x. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so... On number five, we need to figure out what x is. Now, I am giving you the fact that this is a right triangle. Yeah. By putting that little box there, and I need to determine what x is. Now, what are the legs and what is the hypotenuse here? What's the legs? Four and eight. Four and eight, and my hypotenuse is what? X. Always directly opposite of my 90 degree angle. So that means that, what do I get here? I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem to solve for x. 4 squared plus is equal to, very simple, nothing difficult here. 16 plus 64 is equal to x squared. 80 is equal to x squared. Now what do I do? Square root. Now here's where I want to be specific about what I expect for your answers. If all of your numbers here are nice numbers, whole numbers, right? When you take the square root, I want you to simplify that radical. I don't want a decimal. If they are all decimals like there, I want decimals back. If they're all nice numbers, 4 and 8 are whole numbers, right? I'm good there, there's no decimals. I expect you to simplify this, which means you have to reduce that radical. And how do we go about doing that? How do we undo a square root? Square. Perfect square, right? Are there any perfect squares that go into 80? 16. So it's the square root of 16 times what? The square root of 5. Multiply those out, you will get the square root of 80. Now what is the square root of 16? 4. Four. So we have 4 square roots of 5 is equal to x, correct? And that can't be simplified any further, so my x is equal to 4 square roots of 5. Now, if they were decimals, I'd allow you to do decimals, but I want it to be exactly the same as everything <coughs> else that is there. The units need to be the same. Now, take a look at number 7. What do you notice about number seven that is different from what we just did? There's a few things, obviously. What's that? You're finding a leg. And of course, we have decimals. So in number seven, it'll be slightly different. Looks like this. Right uh, angles right there. We have x, we have 9.7, and we have 13.3. Since we're dealing with decimals, the answer for x needs to be in decimal form, right? Right. So, 
What do we do? Um, okay, so it's going to be 13.3 squared is equal to x squared plus 9.7 <coughs> squared, right? Mm -hmm. Or x squared plus 9.7 squared is equal to 13.3 squared. No matter where it is, equal what side it's on. So when we do square this, what do we end up getting here? What is 13.3 squared? 76 point what? 89. Very good. And then x squared plus 9.7 squared. Okay. And then what do we do to solve for x? Subtract the 94.09 minus 94.09. So what do we get here? 82.8 is equal to x squared. And then what? Square root, square root. So x is going to be equal to what? Now be careful with this. Now, technically you're going to give me the right answer anyways because your calculator is only going to give you one answer, right? But when you take the square root, how many answers do you get? It's a common mistake I see on the SLOs and a lot of the homework assignments. When we square root something, we get two answers, right? You have the positive and the negative version. Now, one of those in this case isn't going to work because you can't have a negative length, right? right. But what do you get? 9.099 and x is equal to negative 9.099. But this one is not feasible, right? Because again, it's the length of a side and we can't have a negative length. Just keep in mind, anytime you take the square root, you always get two answers. In other cases, that's going to be very, very important. In this case, it, it, it doesn't really matter. But know that. So x is equal to 9.099. <coughs> Any questions? No. Okay. Good. So 1 through 8 is fairly simple. Now, let's talk about the second principle that is very important when dealing with trig. And those are the trig identities. Those are the, not identities, but the trig functions. Sine, cosine, tangent. Secant, cosecant, cotangent, those are all important aspects of trig that we need to talk about. And they all deal with a right triangle. So if we have a right triangle that looks like this. Sine, cosine, and tangent, cosecant, and all that can, be, can help you figure out the lengths of triangles and the, and the measure of angles and the degrees of angles. So, what mnemonic device, past handful of years, have you gotten that will help you determine what a sine is equal to? Cosine, tangent. So, so uh, yeah, exactly. It's not hard. You know it. Okay. So, good to tell. Now, the S, the C, and the T will give me are the sine, cosine, and tangent, and what comes after it is the opposite adjacent and uh, hypotenuse stuff. So, when dealing with sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, and all that, you have to have a reference angle. And in numbers 8 through 12, I'm asking you to re use reference angle what? A. That means I'm using that. I'm using that angle right there, angle A, as the reference angle. Because that's going to make a big difference. If I was using C... The opposite side would be different than what I'm using A, right? What is the opposite side right now? If I'm referring to this <coughs> angle A, what is my opposite side? Which one would that be? It would be opposite of the angle, right? So that would be over here. My opposite side would be right here. What would be my adjacent side? The bottom one that's attached to the angle, right? Adjacent. And then obviously the hypotenuse is always opposite of the right angle, correct? Mm -hmm. Now if this were, if we were using reference angle C, this would be opposite, this would be adjacent. So it depends on the angle you use. So the sine of A is going to be equivalent to what? Ratio. Opposite over hypotenuse. So, oh, opposite over hypotenuse. 
And these are things you need to either memorize or use SOKOTO to help you do this. What is cosine of A? Adjacent over what? Hypotenuse. What is the tangent of A? Opposite over adjacent. Now there are a few other important ones we need to talk about. And that is the cosecant of A, the secant of A, and the cotangent of A. These are other important trig functions that we have to understand and know. And these are very, very easy. The cosecant of A is simply 1 over the sine of A. But what does that mean in opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent terms? What does that mean? Well, let's calculate this. We have 1 over sine, right? What is sine, though? So we have 1 over opposite over hypotenuse, correct? But we can't have a fraction in the denominator. So what do we have to do to simplify that? How do we divide fractions? Keep switch flip. So 1 over 1 times what? Hypotenuse over opposite. Which is? Hypotenuse over what? So that means we're doing a conversion, right? Like you did in science all the time. Physical science probably did it all the time, right? Just converted the formula here. So that means that cosecant is really what? Hypotenuse over what? It's just the flip of it. Correct? Mm -hmm. Secant is 1 over cosine of A. Which means it's going to be what? The flip of that, right? Which is what? Hypotenuse over adjacent. Just the inverses of each other, right? So what is the, the cotangent is going to be 1 over the tangent of A, which means I'm going to be dealing with what? Adjacent over opposite. These are your basic trig functions. They each have different graphs, and eventually you'll get into that. We won't get into that this year, but you'll eventually get into the graphs of those specific functions. All right? Now, in number 8 through 12, I want you to take the given triangle and calculate all the trig functions there, all the ratios for that specific triangle. So in number 8, or 9, sorry, it's 9. In number 9, you are given this right triangle right here with 15, 12, 9, A, B, C. We're using angle A as the reference, correct? And I want you to calculate the sine, cosine of that triangle. Cotangent, cosecant, secant. So what is my sine of A equivalent to? Opposite over what? Hypotenuse, so it's 9 fifteenths, which reduces to what? 3 fifths, which reduces to 0.6 in decimal form. I want you to be able to do both fraction and decimal form, because we don't know which one will be easier in that specific situation, or what I'm asking in that problem. So you've got to be able to go back and forth. What's the cosine of A? Adjacent over hypotenuse, which is? Or 4 fifths, which is equal to 0.8. All you're doing here. Now what about tangent of A? That's what? Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, 9 twelfths, which reduces to 3 fourths, which gives me 0.75. Now what is the cosecant of A? Which is 1 over the sine of A, or in other words, the flip of your what? Sine function, right? So what is it going to be? 15 over 9. 15 over 9, which if you look back up here, is just the flip, right? And you're, it gives you 5 over 3, which is what? 1.66 repeating in decimal form. Now we have to do the secant of A, which is what? 
a flip of cosine, which is 15 over 12, which is 5 over 4, which is 1.25 approximately. Well, not approximately, exactly. And then we've got to find the cotangent of A, which is equal to what? Flip of that, or 12 ninths, which reduces to 4 thirds, or 1 and 0.33 repeat. Does that make sense? That's what I want you to do on 9 through 12. Do we have any questions now? Up to this point. I'm going to cruise through this because I think this is fairly basic. It's not that difficult. You can easily do this. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the next section here. We have two more sections to go through. Using your understanding of basic trig, determine the length or degree of the missing side or angle of the triangle. So let's take a look at number... 13. All right. You guys have that, right? Yeah. So let's talk about, hopefully you have that written down. You can certainly use Sokoto to get it if we need to. Alright, so let's take a look at number 13. What are we looking to find in number 13? We're given a bunch of information. We we're given that it's a right triangle. We're looking for the hypotenuse. We know that uh, 11 is one of the legs, and the degree here is 37. We have A, C, and B, and we are trying to find X. We have a few ways of tackling this, correct? We can use reference angle B. You, I would certainly use reference angle B, because you have the degree, right? So what are we going to do here? We want, we have the degree 37, right? We know that that's 37, and we know that that means, this is 90, which means this has to be what? What is it? 53. Exactly. You got to add up to 180 in there. Now, you can use reference angle A if you'd like, or reference angle B if you would like, to do this and find X. So let's just use B because we're given that, and this we had to do a little bit of work to figure out, which is not difficult, but still. So what are we going to need to do to find X here? We have what? Adjacent over, adjacent in our, our hypotenuse, correct? So what can we do here to do this? What sign, what function, I said sign, but what function Trig function will allow me to use hypotenuse and adjacent to find one of those angles, or one of those sides. Cosine. Cosine. So it's the cosine of what? Cosine of B, but what is B? 37 degrees. So it's the cosine of 37 is equal to what? Because if you just put the cosine of B, I have two unknowns. If I just put the cosine of B is equal to what? Adjacent over hypotenuse, I have this, correct? To solve for x would mean that I need to know what cosine of b is, but I, but what is b? b is 37 degrees. So you actually have to put in the value or the degree of that angle to use it. That's why if you're going to use angle a, you're going to have to figure out that it's 53. You get the same answer. But the cosine of 37 is equal to what now? 11 over x, because it's opposite over what? Hypotenuse, correct? And we know that that's a hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90 degree. So how do we solve this now? First of all, the problem is I want to solve for x, and it's in the denominator, right? How do I get it out of the denominator? Multiply. Multiply by what? X. Yeah. So the only way to get it out of the denominator is to multiply by x over 1, and multiply by x over 1, or just x, right? And you're given what now? Or you have x times the cosine of 37 is equal to 11. Now, how do I solve for x? It's x what with cosine of 37? What's operations going on between the x and the cosine of 37? So how would I undo that multiplication to get x by itself? 
Divide by the cosine of 37. Cosine of 37. So x now is equal to what? So let's go and do this. 11 over what? What is the cosine of 37 approximately? Three decimal places, right? Because we're going to need to get consistent answers here. So I ask that you round it to 3. So what is the cosine of 37? So on your calculator, type in the cosine of 37. What do you get? What is it? 0.7199. Okay. Now, what is 11 divided by 0.799? And that's going to be the length of that hypotenuse. Thirteen point seven six seven. So that means that x is equal to thirteen point seven six seven. That is the length of that side. Now, how would I take, if I asked you to take this one step further and calculate this missing side here, could you do that? What would you do? Use the Pythagorean theorem, right? 11 squared plus x squared is equal to 13.767 squared. And then you get your last side. Because that's what you're doing in the next section. Okay, the next section... You are, or the next portion, you are trying to find all the missing sides and all the missing angles. But, before we do that, let's take a look at number... Let's take a look, let's do number 17. Look real quick. Yeah, number 17. Let's take a look at number 17 then. Because in number 17, what are you looking for? What are you looking for in 17? An angle in number 17. That little circle, the squiggly through it, okay, that's theta. That's whenever you're dealing with degrees and unknown degrees, that's what you're going to be looking for, theta. It's not x or y, x and y and z are sides. When you're looking for theta, that's when you're looking for an angle. So let's take a look at number 17 and do number 17. Because in number 17, I want you to find that missing angle. The degree to that missing angle. It is a right triangle. I'm giving you that. And that's the information that I give you, right? Now, in order to do this, you need to know what these sides are. This is my what? Uh, this is my hypotenuse, and these are my legs, correct? I am going to use what? Angle is a reference angle here. Well, I'm looking for theta, so I want to use A, right? I want to use this angle if I'm looking for that theta. So, in, uh, in relation to my angle A, what is this? What is this in relation to my angle? Okay, so I have adjacent and hypotenuse, so what do I need to use? What trig function do I need to use to help solve this? Cosine, right? Opposite, we have adjacent and hypotenuse, so we're going to need to use cosine. So what does that mean? It, the cosine of what? Theta. Theta is Theta. equal to what? 12 over 13, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, because that's what cosine is, right? Okay, well, what is 12 divided by 13? we got to find out. we got to solve for theta. we got to get theta by itself, right? So what is 12 over 13? Because it's easier to deal with decimals when solving this. So what is 12 divided by 13? .923, right? Okay, well, how do I get theta by itself? That means I'm going to have to split up the cosine and the theta, correct? Well, to do that, you're going to need to take the inverse cosine. So in other words, you're going to have to take this entire side right here and go cosine to the negative 1. That is the inverse. Because remember, when we did inverse functions, you'd have to put to the negative 1, right? Correct? So we want to go inverse cosine of this. We'll cancel this out. 
leaving what by itself here? The co inverse, well, inverse cosine will get rid of the cosine portion, leaving theta by itself. But then you need to take the inverse cosine of 0.923. And that will tell you the degree of that missing angle. So that means on your calculator, you're going to have to go inverse cosine of 0.923 and determine the degree here. Remember, this will be in degrees, and I want it to three decimal places, just like everything else, if possible, right? So what is your degree here? What is it? So it's 22.631 degrees, approximately. That is the degree. Now, we will be getting into application problems that deal with this exact thing. Uh, but we need to first be able to be able to do these quite easily, and we'll get to the application. Does that make sense? So we've done one where you have to find a side, right? And we've done one where you have to find the angle. Now let's do one where you have to find all the missing jump. Okay? So let's take a look at number... Just go right to 19. Because in 19, the last portion here, the last section here, I want you to find all the missing sides and all the missing angles. Of this. Now, some of them are not hard to find missing angles, right? Some of them are. Some of them I'm not even giving you if it is a right triangle or not. So you need to figure all that out based on the information that is given. So at number 19, we have this one right here, which we know is a right triangle at 62 degrees, 22.6. We have C, A, and B. And that's all you're given, right? We need to find all the missing stuff. So how do we want to go about attacking this? First of all is, what's the first thing I can figure out here? I can figure out angle A, right? What is this right here? It needs to add up to 180. We got 90 and 62, so what do we have to add? 28. So that missing angle is 28, right? Do we agree? Yeah. Pretty, pretty basic, right? So now, how do we find a side? We need to find either the hypotenuse here, or we need to find that right there. And then after that, we can use Pythagorean theorem to finish this off, right? Or you could do double trig functions to figure it out if you really want. It's up to you. You'll get the same answer. So what do we need to do here? What would you like to do? We know that this is 62. So let's deal with angle B. We have opposite over what? So if we do the sine of 62 degrees is equal to opposite, which is 22.6 over what? Let's just call it x. All right? We're looking for that side. Now, how do we solve this? You got to get it off the bottom, right? Multiply by x. Multiply by x. So we get x times the sine of 62 degrees is equal to 22.6. Now what do we do? Divide by, the sine of divide by the sine of 62. x is equal to 22.6 over the sine of 62. x is equal to, well, 22.6 divided by whatever the sine of 62 is, which is approximately... 883, so x is going to be what? 22.6 divided by 0.883, which gives me what? 595. Round it to three decimals. So that means that this is 25.595. Now, I don't know if it's inches, centimeters, feet, yards, that, that will come with the application problem. As long as we can figure out the values for each side or the lengths, we'll be all right. Now, how would I figure out this last side? We'll call this one y. Well, we know that two legs squared, the sum of the two legs squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, right? 
So that would mean that this is the hypotenuse. So we have y squared plus 22.6 squared is equal to 25.595 squared. Well, let's go through this now. What do we get here? What is 22.6 squared? What is it? All right, and what is 25.595 squared? 655.104. Okay, now we subtract the 510.76 minus 510.76. You got y squared is equal to what? Forty-four point three four four. Now what do we do? Now we know we're only getting at the positive version of it, but know that there is a negative version, just not for this case. And what do we end up getting? Twelve point zero one four. What is it? Twelve point zero one four. Okay. So that means that y is equal to approximately twelve point zero one four. So now we've filled in all the missing gaps, and we're done. Solve the right triangle every degree, every side, and we're all good. Does that make sense? Okay, just to review, make sure we understand how to use the trig functions, how to use Pythagorean theorem in right triangles. Okay, I'd ask that you work on this. There's 24 of them. I, get through, if you could get through 18, that'd be great. 1 through 18. Okay, 1 through 18. And we'll finish it off. I mean, it won't take very long. We'll uh, continue on this tomorrow, kind of build from this a little bit tomorrow, and continue with the review of basic trig and then building up to more complex stuff, okay? So you have time to work on that right now.